What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. So, as you can see, the landscape looks a little bit different outside the window here. And I'm here with my, my dad in the, uh, the Penske truck here. So, I am on my way to Colorado. Um, I want to do a full vlog style for, for this move. Um, unfortunately, you know, just because of the time restrictions and you know, we had a pretty tight schedule, I just didn't really get the time to film some of this stuff on the before the move itself. Um, how I prepared the car, how I got it up onto the trailer, etc. But um, I will uh, take a second uh, in a little bit and show once we stop to show you guys um, essentially uh, what kind of trailer can hold our cars, especially lowered versions of our cars. So uh, I did have a little bit of an issue with that. So I'll show you guys that. But um, just a brief overview, what we ended up doing, um, it's a 28 hour drive from Connecticut to the new town I'm gonna be in in Colorado. Um, so what we did is we did essentially a 20 and a half hour day, 20, 21 hour day the first day of driving. I ended up taking a little bit longer because of stops and we had ended up hitting some traffic. Uh, there was a, an accident on I-80 West, but um, we did that. We stopped in Omaha, Nebraska at a hotel. So we did a uh, straight shot. We uh, left on Wednesday night, uh, right around uh, 10 o'clock at night and ended up landing in Omaha at the hotel uh, right around 9.30ish, 9 o'clock. So quite a long day, as you can imagine. A ton of driving. Uh, we drove through the night the night before, so we kind of traded off sleeping in the cab and, uh, you know, recouping some energy, uh, relieving. So, so the issue actually wasn't really staying awake. It was... Uh, for, for some reason, both of us, our, our eyes started giving us issues because, uh, you know, just keeping them open and awake for so long, especially driving at night, it takes a lot out of you. So uh, we were both really careful about, you know, monitoring, you know, how each other felt on at the wheel. Uh, super important, keep yourself hydrated. It's something we uh, worked on actively. Uh, keep ourselves, you know, fueled up. We've got a bunch of snacks and granola bars and things like that. And then we stopped a couple times for, you know, snacks and gas and everything like that uh, today we woke up uh, 4 30 we were out of the hotel by 5 and we're on our way doing the last eight hour stint uh, seven and a half eight hour uh, straight to the house the new house so very excited it's been a quite a long journey but overall the move itself wasn't really that bad obviously driving and sitting in one place for so long kind of sucks but uh, we were able to kind of manage it and we we called a lot of family talked to some friends on the phone We listened to some podcasts watched some or listened to some stand-up on the speakers here together. Uh, it's been great, but um, Yeah, that's uh, been our experience a um, couple things the first couple states the Northeast states are probably the hardest to drive through especially with this big truck uh, so this is a 16 foot Penske truck with the car carrier with my car on the back. So uh, pretty heavy. Um, we are just holding cruise control 65 to 70, right what the, uh, the, 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 essentially the pamphlet says you're supposed to do. It's actually electronically limited to 70 anyways off when you're using cruise control. So just sitting back, making sure you know, you're not jerking the wheel in any direction. Uh, I'm reversing the, the least amount possible with the trailer because, you know, with the trailer, it goes the opposite way that you turn. So it's kind of wonky. And if you haven't done it before, it's gonna be really weird. But overall, with this setup, it's, I mean, it takes a little bit of learning to feel it out for the first couple hours. But after that, it's really not that bad to drive at all. Um, the cab is pretty comfortable. Um, Unfortunately, Pensy kind of screwed us over when we picked it up because they didn't have a trailer available. Uh, even though, you know, we had the reservation and everything. So we had to drive an extra hour the opposite direction to go pick up a trailer, but uh, the car carrier. So it, it ended up working out, but um, that was the only really hiccup in this whole thing. Um, 
other than that, just the entire drive itself, it's, I mean, once you get out of like New York, Pennsylvania, those two states are pretty windy up and down, lots of hills. So you have to really be careful to monitor how the engine's doing. I haven't had any overheating issues. It's about uh, between 70 and 90, depending on where we've been. Um, Fahrenheit air temp, so. Um, we didn't really have any issues at all with monitor with, with temps. I haven't seen any coolant spikes or uh, any oil temp spikes, anything like that at all. So that's been fine. But um, once you get out of those two states, out into the west, into Ohio, Indiana, uh, Illinois, and then Iowa, Nebraska, straight shot across the top there, you're basically just taking I-80 West all the way. And you do a little bit of maneuvering around Chicago so you don't have to go directly through it because it, 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 it's just to avoid some uh, some traffic. But other than that, it's just a straight shot. It's super, super smooth. A lot of the roads are in good shape and it's very flat too, which makes things really easy. Um, compared to the Northeast, I've noticed that a lot of people actually follow the, the kind of like the, you know, the written rules of the road here, where if you're, um, uh, I've noticed that, you know, the whole don't travel in the left lane thing. Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, that's a law for the, the, pretty much the entire country. But once we start getting into like these long highways, that it, it is less congested for sure. But in general, we've noticed that a lot of people actually follow those rules and it, it makes things and driving just really, really simple. Uh, especially when you're, I'm in a big rig like this, I always take the farthest right lane that's open. And if I have to pass for a slower truck, then wait for an opening, go around them, hop right back in the right lane. And I mean, I pretty much do that on the highway with my car anyways. Um, you should never really be traveling in the left lane unless you're passing. It's just an, it's just an easy way to get a ticket. So um, yeah, um, once we get to our destination, like I said, I will show you guys the trailer setup, what I had to do to uh, uh, make a couple small uh, adjustments to allow the car to work without scraping too much. Um, and uh, I'll show you the unloading process as well. So. What's up guys? So, um, I kind of made a mistake, but um, essentially everything worked out great with the trailer. I got it right here. This is the uh, Penske car carrier. It's pretty standard for what they use. Um, I didn't get any footage of the car. I'll show you guys a picture really quick up on the screen here and show a little arrow about what I'm talking about. But the, um, the trailer itself worked out great. Um, I didn't have any time just because of time crunch when you're moving, you really don't want to be paying attention to filming or you know, I just want to get things done. So very long day yesterday, um, but I was able to get the car on and off. It was fine. A um, couple things I want to point out to you guys. Um, the way that this works, essentially, um, there's normally right here, there are these big plates. I'll flip the camera around for you guys. So these big plates go right there. They're like, and they act like wheel stops for the end. But because my car was lowered, I had actually had to take these off, give myself a little bit more clearance so the bumper wouldn't hit them. And what I did was, once the car was up here, I tossed these straps up over the wheel, ratchet it down, and then lock that. And then what I did was, with the wheel sitting right here, I actually went in and put these plates back on once the car was already on the lift and that seemed to work out completely fine. Um, I had no issues. Um, I did scrape my under plastic under trays that are just inside the pinch welds a little bit on these on the metal here. Um, not a not too big of a deal. Just a little bit of scrapage. I went under the car to make sure everything was OK. Um, and then the yeah, last thing I did to make sure that this all worked for my car was um, for the ramps that come out. Um, I just had these little wooden step up things um, because I needed to make sure that the front lip didn't scrape. So um, when these come out, there's a little bit of an angle here. So I put the wood down there while the back wheels are coming down off and it went over the wood to make the angle a little less steep. 
And once the back wheels were over the wood, I took them out and I did the same thing at the end of the ramps when they were coming down. So all in all, if you are stock height with the WRX, you won't have any issues at all. Um, if you are a bit lowered, it works. You just gotta, you know, make sure you're working the system a little bit. Um, just make sure you don't scrape too much, but um, no damage, everything felt fine. I took the car for a drive after, you know, 2,200 miles on the trailer, completely felt completely fine. So that is it. Um, I'm gonna take you guys on a quick drive in a little bit and I think you guys are gonna like what you see, but um, it's a bit of a drive, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth it. And it'll be a good explanation of why I, uh, why I moved out here, so. All right guys, so this is what I wanted to show you and this is one of the reasons why I uh, moved to Colorado. We are right in Rocky Mountain National Park, taking the Subaru up. We got all-wheel drive, we got all these dirt roads here. It is pretty well packed, so if you guys have a car, I'm running my Extreme Contact Sports from uh, Continental and it seems to be doing great. Suspension's doing fine. I'm just taking it pretty slow, pretty easy. It's first gear pretty much the entire way up. But um, we are standing at about 12,000 feet, 12.5 I think it is. Um, and it is just absolutely glorious. Um, my AFRs are fine. Bren tuning, you are a magician. Uh, car's running fine. It's, it's uh, you know, super hot today. It was 90 degrees down uh, in near Denver, but it's uh, a little cooler up here, but still, you know, 80 degrees temps, temps are great. Everything's great. Cars running amazingly. Obviously I'm not getting on it too hard, but, uh, running about E30 right now. Um, could be running a little more, but absolutely loving it. Um, I'm so excited to show you guys what I have, uh, left to do with a car. We got more projects, more stuff to do. And, uh, this Right here is why we made the move. So we'll see you guys soon. And thanks you guys for, uh, for supporting the channel.